This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. While most pharmacists dispense drugs, you're about to meet one who wants to take you off of them. Tonight, using his pillars of optimal health, Billy Weiss, the 21st century pharmacist, explains how to use a biblically-based system to ditch your drugs, dump the side effects, and feel like a teenager again. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Shabbat Shalom, Torah fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. I'm your host, Scott Laird, and please welcome my co-host, the Chief Operating Officer of A Rood Awakening International, Ted Clayton. Thanks for having me here, Scott, I appreciate it. Certainly, you know, Ted, we, are, we have a calendar in front of us here, we're gonna get to that in just a second, but we are developing a brand new calendar. Yes, and I'm very excited about the new calendar. Pictures on this new calendar are gonna be pictures that no one else has seen before. Yes, wonderful it's gonna stuff, it's gonna be great. And speaking of, so now people think, well, January, wait a minute, are you not done with the calendar? Well, those of you who are not familiar with a Hebrew calendar, this one actually goes all the way through June. That's correct. And so that is, uh, we're still on this calendar. And as a matter of fact, let's get to that. So we are on the fourth and final uh, Shabbat of the month of Tevet on your astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. And that means a new month is right around the corner, which we spot with the new moon. That's right. And that will be, uh, by the looks of it, let's see, let's peer ahead. That is going to be uh, next Thursday or maybe even possibly next Friday. That's right, so we could be talking about a new moon next week. We could be, that's absolutely right. Now there's lots of political upheavals lately, speaking of oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> calendars, Boy, lots howdy. going on. Yeah. And because of that, uh, people are looking to the book of uh, Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously people see hints of this with, uh, you know, whether it's a, it's a vaccine or something happening politically or whatever, yes, they're looking yes. at, wait a minute, is this the mark of the beast or something close to or relative right. to the mark of the beast or what is this? Right. And of course, uh, Michael is an expert on that. He finds the book of the Revelation, the easiest book in the Bible. I don't know how he does that. But. I don't know how he does it either because to be honest with you, even his wife, Anna Lil, asked him to have, you know, please take this calendar or this this book of the Revelation and make a scroll out of it so we can understand it and so people can really get the knowledge of the Revelation. So we have this Revelation scroll available here, we do. Scott. Yep. And you too can take a look at that and see what's happening in the end times. That's right, and as a matter of fact, it's, it's good you mention it right now because it's actually on the calendar. That's what this year's calendar is all about. So you have the month here uh, and of course a picture this picture is from that scroll that Ted was just talking right. about. And we actually highlight the part, the place on that scroll where this calendar or where this uh, event up here is taking place. But this whole scroll is available. It basically takes you from Revelation 1 1 right to the end. That's right. Uh, in chronological order because the book of Revelation is not in chronological order. And so that's what confuses a lot of people. That's what confused Anna Lil. That's why she wanted Michael to create this scroll, which he did for her birthday. That's right. And that's, that's right. what initiated this for us. And if you want to get one of your own, you can. It's at rudeawakening.tv slash scroll. And speaking of Michael Rude, we have some fabulous news. Uh, with Michael and his health. You know, everybody uh, asks yes. me every week, well, can you give us an update on Michael's health? Can you give us an update on how Michael is doing? Well, the good news is Michael is back home. He's out of the Stroke Rehab Center uh, here in Charlotte. He's back home with his wife, Anna Lil, and he's continuing his recovery. As uh, uh, Michael has said to me so many times, recovering from strokes are like running marathons, not running a sprint. So right. it, it takes time to recover, and he's been doing that. Uh, he, ca he had to go back into the rehab for a little while. Uh, once he uh, got set up to where he could be back home, they said immediately we can send him home. And I personally went and picked up uh, him and Anna Lil and brought him back home, and he had the biggest smile on his face <laughs> that you could imagine when he was able to get back home. So he wanted me to express his uh, good wishes to everybody uh, here on Shabbat Night Live and let everybody know that he is just working as hard as he can 
uh, to get back. But you know, some people have have uh, had family members that have had strokes and so forth, and they realize it takes time to come back. It it, it does. But and, but he and Anna Lil are really taking the bull by the horns because oh, they normally, are. Uh, what they did you are. tell me, Ted? Because you've been in the medical field well, before, and it's yeah. Well, normally, you know, uh, uh, physical therapists and occupational therapists and so forth, they typically uh, will come once a week to your house and give you that therapy. Well, Anna Lil said, oh no. That's not good enough with Michael. We've got to have him there at least a couple of times a week. So she has been actually bringing physical therapists in and occupational therapists and speech therapists and so forth back in and been working with Michael and now and will continue to do that this time as Michael is back home. And we just thank you guys so much for supporting this ministry while Michael is recovering. You know, the reason, and some people have asked, well, goodness gracious, Ted and Scott, why in the world are you guys doing health-related programs right now? Isn't this a, isn't this supposed to be just you know 100% uh, you know preaching uh, programs? And let me explain that Michael specifically asked that we try to get people back in health. Michael wishes what he has been through in 2020 onto no person, and he wishes that everybody that watches Shabbat Night Live could gain their health. One of the most important things you can have is your health. You know, people talk about money and everything. No, no, no. Folks, it's your health and, and having your health. And so Michael asked us to put some shows on that talk about health, that talk about, you know, getting off pharmacia, which I'm mm -hmm. really glad to see you have Billy Weiss uh, on the program uh, tonight because Billy is a great guy to talk about how to come off these medications that some of you don't need to be on. And so I'm looking forward forward to this show and looking forward to it for my own health right. of being able to watch Billy And that's tonight. why Michael was so excited when he came home because we both know Michael hates pharmacia. He yeah, absolutely. hates the, the fact yes. that he had a stroke and had to be dragged back into the medical system drives him nuts. Absolutely. Because he wants to be home and he wants <laughs> yeah. to do things naturally. Yes. As Revelation 18.23 says, there are sorceries that will deceive all in, in the end times. Yes. Even the elect will deceive yes. the elect. Yes. Well, that's, that's the sorceries. That, if you look at sorceries in the Greek, Michael will be the first to tell you, it's written in the chronological gospels, that means pharmakia. Right, And exactly. he says that in the end times, everyone's gonna be deceived by the medications they're on. Right. And that's what Billy is here tonight to tell you that you don't have to be on those. A lot of what people yeah. are on, I mean, for if you, if you have an accident or something like that or whatever, or if you have a stroke, of course there's some things you have to do. Absolutely. But long-term things that people are only intended to be on, like antacids, for example. Some people get, uh, you know, get prescriptions for that that they're on for years. Well, that's only ever meant to be a 12-week thing at the very most. Right. And Billy's like, whoa, wait a minute. We have a ton of people on these things they don't need to be on, and all it takes is a few changes in your diet and lifestyle, and you're good. That's right. And that's So I really wanted to explain why for the next couple of weeks we're talking about health, because Michael really wants us to talk about health and how to get healthy. We're in no way endorsing any program or anything like this. We're just trying to educate people and show people the different health things that are available out there. So just bear with us as we as we do this and, and get something out of this and get something uh, for your health. There are so many people out there that need to renew their health, and this is a great way to do it. And yeah, take some notes, because if you don't need it, your neighbor probably does. So, That's right, all right. that's well, right. Thank you, Ted, appreciate it very much. All right, so can you really get away from drugs and heal yourself? Well, if you know the right combination, you can. And the 21st Century Pharmacist, Billy Weiss, is up next to share a simple system based on the Bible that can help you break free of pharmacia, so stay tuned. <laughs> Using the story of the lame man at the pool of Bethesda, Michael Rood motivates us to stand up, follow Yeshua's commandments, and walk away from man-made religious rules. I know, I'm preaching to the choir, but that's what I'm doing. I love to tell the story. I love to preach to the choir because you are gonna sing the song now. I'm gonna sing it as long as I can. I'm gonna put this out as long as I can, but you take it and you find somebody to teach it to this week. Pick Up Your Mat and Walk is both a challenging and empowering message, but the only way to watch it is to receive it as our gift. Donate a $50 love gift and we'll send you Pick Up Your Mat and Walk on DVD or Blu-ray. Or donate $100 to receive the teaching plus a pewter double chamber mezuzah. Or donate $300 to receive everything plus a pocket-sized traditional Torah scroll and a decorative stained glass box with three anointing oils. 
Hurry, offer ends January 31st. Call the number on your screen or get your gifts online at monthlylovegift.com. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, said that David, King David, was a prophet who saw beforehand the coming of the Messiah. He saw that his son, the Messiah, would be the Kohen Gadol forever after the order of the Melech Zadik. And Yeshua, ordained as the Melech Zadik, as the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, brought forth bread and wine in Yeshua. On the night in which he was betrayed, brought forth bread and wine and interpreted the very thing that Abraham saw so many generations before. Yeshua took bread and he spoke this blessing. Baruch atah Yehovah elam heinu melech ha'olam. Homotzi lechem min ha'aretz. And he broke the bread and he said, this broken bread represents my broken body, which will be broken for you. By my stripes, you will be healed. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm paying the price. Then he took the wine and he said, Baruch atah Yehovah elahinu melech ha'olam. Barei pari ha'gafen. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, creator of the heavens and the earth and the creator of the fruit of the vine. And he said, this represents the renewed covenant, which will be paid for in my blood. As often as you break this bread and you drink this cup, you exhibit what I've done for you because I am making you priest and kings. I'm paying the price. Shabbat Shalom, priests and kings. We live in a complicated world, do we not? I mean, today's world is a lot different than when Yeshua was around, and so we can't really compare today's diet and lifestyle to Yeshua's diet and lifestyle for many, many reasons, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. Now today, when you feel ill or you wanna get your health back on track, do you go to your doctor? Or who do you go to? Do you go to a naturopath like me? Would you go to a pharmacist? Well, who would go to a pharmacist? Well, a friend of mine, you'd go to him. <laughs> His name is Billy Weiss. He's written The 21st Century Pharmacist. Please welcome Billy Weiss. Welcome to The Word on Wellness. Thank you, Scott. Great to be here. Now, this is your new book called The 21st Century Pharmacist. Mm -hmm. uh, you picked this title because uh, it, you're not a typical pharmacist. I mean, most people think you go to a pharmacist to get your drugs or, or whatever, your antacids or maybe even your supplements in some rare cases, but you have a different mandate. What is that mandate? Well, the 21st century pharmacist concept, Scott, is, is designed on today. In the 21st century, you mentioned in your open that it's a lot different than, than in olden times, is that the 21st century pharmacists should understand things outside of just prescription drugs. They should understand drug-drug interactions, drug-nutrient interactions. They should understand drug-nutrient depletions. They should understand wellness. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's just not taught in the, in the typical pharmacy schools. So when you went to pharmacy school, were you originally interested in something like this or were you just like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm good with science, I'm gonna be a pharmacist? What, what did that go like? Uh, it, it was kind of a hybrid to be honest with you. I'd always been into wellness and, and um, I had always thought about it and I thought I would learn some of it in pharmacy school, but I did not. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a, a transition uh, when I realized in pharmacy school that I was not learning any of the wellness stuff uh, it, which is after pharmacy school why I went back to school. Mm. So now you went back to school. Now you are not just then a pharmacist, you have, uh, you are a uh, wellness advisor or what, what do we call you Well, now? I have an advanced fellowship in metabolic and nutritional medicine okay. from the University of South Florida School of Medicine. So it's just the ability to understand how the body works, how God designed our bodies to work and how to try to keep those bodies working healthy um, so that we can do the things that we enjoy doing. Now, speaking of, speaking of enjoy doing things uh, and how our body works, some people would say, well, I enjoy going to McDonald's. I like a good fast food. <laughs> I like course. my Chick-fil-A or whatever right. it is. Right. And you know, our bodies, you know, people might think, well, 
how can people get cancer? How can people get diabetes? How come some people get that and some people get other things and other people don't get anything? How come grandpa mm -hmm. lived to be 98 years old eating bacon and eggs every morning? You know, right. that type of thing. Um, but you mentioned to me before we turned the cameras on here that uh, our bodies have a survival mechanism mm -hmm. that is designed to take some of this punishment without killing us first. Right. So how does that work? Well, God, you know, designed our bodies to be very intelligent. And, wh and what I talk about a lot at my OptiURX summits is that, that the body can overcome a lot of bad things. The body can overcome the choices that we make that may not be the best choices to go to McDonald's or, or whatever, you know, to drink mm -hmm. alcohol, to smoke cigarettes, to whatever, you know, the person's particular um, habit may be. Um, but the body, in order to do that, can compartmentalize different things, but it has to sacrifice other uh, functions that are necessary for us to be what I like to call optimally healthy wellness, optimal health, wellness, and fitness, right? Okay. Where we feel our best, look our best, perform our best, think our best, and it's just really not possible long term to be able to do that. Some of us can get away with it. Uh, some people get away with it for, for quite a while, mm. um, but there are ramifications. And, and I do believe that our choices, and I believe science backs us, it's called epigenetics, that the choices that we make determine uh, in the most part, whether we have heart disease, whether we have high blood pressure, whether we have cancer, whether we have diabetes, whether we have you know, one of these autoimmune conditions. So the choices we make really make a difference. Mm -hmm. All the cells in our body, God has designed them to be uh, replaced about every seven years. And so I tell people all the time, the choices that you and I make today uh, affect what our new cells will be like over the next seven years. Mm. And we wanna start from a much higher, healthier standpoint than a medium or lower standpoint. That because makes a lot that's of sense. the aging process. Right, and, and uh, something I've always brought up to people is that you know it takes a, a good 10 years for a cancer to develop at the point where yes. you feel a lump and go, Correct. what's that? Correct. And then, but with nutritional science, I mean, as you know, it takes about, instead of building 10 years to develop that, you could take about a year of nutritional therapy and, and reverse that within about a year. For a month for about every year that that cancer has developed is what, what it'll take to back it back up. Yeah, and, and Scott, you bring up an interesting point that, that I'm going through this with a very good friend right now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, that has been diagnosed with cancer. And the, the, the story is always from the medical community that that cancer is fast growing and we gotta start treatments, mm -hmm. chemo and radiation now. When in actuality, you're right, the average cancer has been growing seven to 10 years before it's detectable by, by any um, scans or any tests that we would do or any notice that we would have on our, on our own bodies. And so then people are caused to rush into a treatment uh, because they're obviously overwhelmed, they're scared, they, they face probably the most unfortunate diagnosis that we think of is cancer, right? The C mm -hmm. word. And so then they jump into things that may not be what is best for them. So all I try to get people to do is to take a step back, understand it has been a long process coming, and you don't have to make a decision today that's gonna determine the outcome. You, you take your time, you do your research, and, that, and that's really the concept of, of what the 21st century pharmacist is, is to, is to educate the people on the best methods and to give them an informed decision rather than just the, the more what I'll call one-sided, mm -hmm. that you have to take this drug, you have to take this treatment, you have to do this plan. Uh, I believe that God designed our bodies to be healthy and when we give our bodies what they need, they can do amazing things. Hmm. And um, part of that is taking the junk away and giving the body the good stuff. And it, it's, it's not like overcomplicated, but there's so much noise out, right, about what is the good stuff, what is the bad stuff, right. you know, because you, you see one person that says it's this, you see another person that says it's this, and they can be complete opposite ends of the spectrum, right? And so what, what I do and what my program does is we take the science and we take 30 years of experience of doing this and say this is what works for the vast majority of people, 
This is what science says. And that is all based, Scott, on the way God designed our bodies to work. So, so and, and that's the way you've, you, you mentioned it's very complicated. You know, people say there's, there's stories all over the place. This person did this, that person did that. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to believe? I often get the question myself, what can I take to help with this? Well, it's not about taking a supplement or something to get rid of this. It's, it's more about taking away, isn't it? Taking away, like you said, the junk and then adding in the good stuff yeah. to sort of turn that around. Well, it is, because here's, here's the easiest way that, I, that I've found to explain it to people. If, if, you're, if one of us goes home today after filming this show and our house is on fire and the fire department's there putting the fire out and, and we, we go around with a gas can and we're spraying gas all over the fire, it's gonna make it very difficult for the fire department to do their job, correct? Correct. We, I believe in America especially, that's where we've come with medicine. We have a problem and we say, oh, I'll take that drug for that. And what we fail to realize is until we stop pouring the gas on the fire, the drug is just covering something up, right? It's just Mm. covering up the symptoms and at a cost, at a very high cost. And that's another big part of the 21st century pharmacist is the average prescription drug, according to the University of Stanford School of Medicine, has 398 side effects. So when we think about 398 side effects, wouldn't it be better to take away the thing that's creating it and then put the good stuff back so that the body can correct it the way God intended? Indeed, and most people are on more than one drug. And you mentioned that very fact, uh, we, we dog ear this page here on your book, page uh, 32 of the 21st Century Pharmacist. You mentioned that exact thing. But when you have two drugs, people say, well, okay, 300, 398 plus 398, that's, gosh, that's almost <laughs> 700 side effects, but it's worse than that because it's exponential, isn't it? It, it because is. Because this one may react with that one, and now you have a new problem, so it's, it's a synergistic problem. It's- it is, Scott, and, and that's, the, that's the issue, is that when the average senior in America is on seven to eight prescription drugs, and you know that any time we add more than one, we get exponential side effects. And so the body just cannot it gets to a point that the body cannot overcome all these side effects. Mm-hmm. It, you know, there's um, the ACORD study, for example, and this is probably, in my mind, the biggest problem in America today is, is diabetes and insulin resistance. Mm-hmm. Now, doesn't mean you have to be a diabetic. We miss, we miss most of them. As a matter of fact, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill says 88% of Americans today have metabolic problems, okay? Mm-hmm. So we can assume from that that eight out of 10 or almost nine out of 10 Americans have some of this insulin resistance or diabetes tendencies but that, that may go unchecked for decades. But when we, when we look at those issues and we see that the ACORD study tells us that the more aggressively mm-hmm. a diabetic was treated, the sooner they died. Now, what did they consider aggressive treatment? the more drugs they were on, right? The Mm. more drugs was more aggressive. So however, they also showed that that could improve their blood marker called A1C, right? Which is an average 90 day blood sugar. So improving the blood marker, but being dead, (laughs) I don't know what you think about those kind of treatments and odds, but I I don't like them, right? So let's figure out what's causing the problem Let's let the body correct it the way God intended, and then we get good results. That's almost like cheating on a final exam, isn't it? Yeah, you may pass, but when you come out of school, you're not right. gonna be prepared because you never really had the material under it's your a, belt anyway. It's a great example. Yeah, so yeah. now you've created a simple system to help get rid of most of what ails humankind, and you call it OptiURx, it's on your, it's on your shirt. Uh, people can find more information about this at billyw360.com, right? That's Correct. Where you find all your videos yes, and everything. And there are what you call five pillars to optimal health, and we wanna talk about those today. And your first one is uh, something that you and I wholeheartedly believe in, and I know why you put it as number one, and that is God-given quality food. And That is a great name for it, God-given. So these are the foods that grow out of the ground, that walk on the ground, not the stuff that you find in a box. So what exactly do you teach people when you talk about God-given quality food? 
Yeah, Scott, you, you bring up a great point. The first thing that we talk about is it doesn't come out of a box, a bag, or a can. Mm. It is real food that will, will, will spoil over time, right? Mm -hmm. It won't last on a shelf for, for decades, right, or years. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it is food that will rot if it's not consumed in a Don't you have a fast food burger at your house or something that's 10 years old or something to that uh, It's effect? more than 10 years old now. <laughs> I do have a Big Mac, uh, <laughs> never been in the refrigerator that looks just like the day I bought it. It's a little worn and torn from flying and going from <laughs> state to state to, to show off, but um, yeah, it, it is quite telling that the bread mm. hasn't molded, that the the uh, the meat, so-called meat, yeah. <laughs> hasn't, you know, yeah. uh, it still looks, I, I, I always joke with the groups, the classes that I think we could put this in a microwave and it would be just like the day you goodness. would have bought it. Now people so. may not think, well, goodness, if I if I did that with a steak, wouldn't it do the same thing? If I, if I bought it from from Whole Foods and brought it home and cooked it, would it wouldn't it not do the same thing? No, it would degrade over time okay. because it's not it doesn't have all the um, preservatives and right. things that these foods have on and them. And people don't even think that some preservatives are as something as innocent as salt, but too much of it. Right. Because what did grandma used to pickle things in? Right. Salt, right? Right. Sugar. Again, right. preserves. Huge too huge much sugar. one is is sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so so when we're talking about foods, we're talking about, like you said, things that walk on the ground, things that grow in the ground, things that grow on a tree, mm -hmm. not something that was made in a in a factory somewhere. Yeah. So we're talking about foods with vitamins, minerals, nutrients, antioxidants. Those are the kind of things we want for, for people to be consuming. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we're accomplishing a couple of things, right? We're taking away, if they're consuming those type of foods, we're taking away some of those bad things, right? Mm -hmm. And we're putting in some of the good things. Right, and that's just so. like if you have a lawnmower, in, and using another analogy here, if you have a lawnmower that's been sitting in your garage for a year and you've got some gas in there that's been sitting in there, well, Anybody who knows about small engines will tell you that that gas is bad gas. Right. And they, yeah, the engine may work, but it's gonna sputter, it's gonna gum right. up everything, and it's not gonna work right. So what do you have to do? You have to, like you just said, drain out the bad. Right. Take out the bad, then put in the good, and wow, look at it go. And I'm assuming yeah. that's what you see when people put God-given quality food in their bodies. It's, it's absolutely amazing, Scott, what we see. When people will just take some simple, life, what I call lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. Uh, the results are quite amazing. Uh, we have people that have come off of um, 16 prescription meds and five insulin shots in just a couple of weeks. In a couple they're, of weeks? And their numbers are better than they've ever been. Wow. Uh, we have people that have lost 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds over a 12-week period. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a girl who's lost 117 pounds of fat. Right. Uh, now, this is over a course of years, yep. but 117 pounds of fat. Uh, we typically see that the almost 100% of type two diabetics come off all their meds, all their insulin. So we see these things happening and it's just amazing. Their mm. stomach issues go away, their arthritis gets better, their autoimmune disease gets better, their, you know, what, their skin conditions, whatever it is, we'll see it improve almost immediately. Right, because it's not a diet for this and a diet for that. Correct. I tell people all Correct. the time, you tell people that all the time, because it's once you get the body in alignment, the way God intended, the way Yahovah intended, the way he created our bodies and said, look, I mean, Genesis 129 is should be our first clue, eat what grows from the ground. Look, I right. gave you food. That's why I also say as well that to think that this world has a shortage of food is absolutely asinine because God would not put us on this earth, <laughs> allow us to grow to this, multi, to this multitude, and then say, okay, fend for yourselves, you're gonna starve. Right. There's so much food out there, but it's a greed problem between countries. It's not really a food problem, and, and because there's so many things that grow out of the ground we can eat that we just don't even realize, and we could just survive on those. So God-given quality food, grows what grows from the ground, don't put a bunch of stuff in it, like too much salt, too much sugar, all that type right. of thing. Now the, the diet, not the diet, I don't wanna call it that, but the, the program you have people on, you mentioned it took a couple of years to you know lose 100 pounds, which, which is great, because that means you're not, people aren't starving, they're just changing their ways, right? Yeah, absolutely, we never count calories, we never weigh, we never measure, because I don't think those things work. What we do teach people to do is eat to control their hormones. 
Ah. And when you eat to control your hormones, the beauty of it is you don't need to count, you don't need to weigh, you don't need to measure, because when you eat the foods that, that give the signals to your hormones, your, your leptin and your ghrelin will normalize and it will tell you when it's time to eat and your body will tell you when it's time to stop. And you won't have all these overeating episodes or these people that say, oh, well, I have to eat eight times a day or I have low blood sugar. All that's nonsense. That's because of the, the pattern that you've put your body in. Hmm. So when you think back um, to the way that people used to eat, even in modern times, our, maybe our parents or grandparents, it was three meals a day, right? Mm -hmm. There was never eat seven or eight times a day to keep your blood sugar stable or keep your metabolism ramped up out here. That's nonsense. Mm. When you eat the God-given quality foods, your body will tell you when you're full and it'll tell you when it's time to eat again. And when folks are overweight, they might think, well, how would I ever, in their mind, they can't think of, well, I'm always hungry. How could I that ever happen with me? But they're having leptin resistance. Correct. Because the brain signal gets lazy and says, I'm out. Yep and just lets you do whatever you want, well, and then there's nothing to say stop. Well, they have leptin resistance, mm -hmm. right? Which, you, which drives their desire to eat. Mm -hmm. It drives their hunger signal. And then they choose probably a poor choice that then spikes their blood sugar, mm -hmm. which then drops again. So the body will react to that spike of the blood sugar, right? And it says, hey, that's bad. That mm -hmm. can cause end organ damage. Right. So it creates insulin to try to drive the blood sugar down. And it overreacts when we spike the sugar up again to keep us alive in the moment. That's the way God designed our bodies to work. The blood sugar drops, they're starving again in an hour, mm. two hours, they're leptin resistance, so they overeat. It's a pattern, Scott. Yep. And so what we see is this same pattern of people saying, well, I have to eat, I have to eat, I have to eat. And until we can get them to change what they eat, that will continue to be their pattern. And the magic is, as soon as they change what they eat, all of a sudden, the leptin signal turns back on. Absolutely, the yep. leptin signal turns on, the insulin levels start to drop, so their blood mm. sugar becomes more stable, and then they go, wow, I'm, I'm not hungry in the mornings like I was, I can wait. Amazing. Yeah, so it, right. really, it really works, and it, it's, it, it works very, very well, and it works very quickly for most people. Now we wanna get into your other four pillars. We have four okay. more pillars to talk about. Uh, we're gonna come back and talk about uh, your supplements that you have designed. We're gonna get into why you designed them and we're also gonna do something with this pudding over here. It's gonna be very revealing. Uh, okay. So I wanna come back and we'll talk about that in just a second. And if you're enjoying this as much as I am, this is Billy Weiss, the 21st century pharmacist, and he is here because of you. So thank you, because you are this show's only sponsor. There's no corporate backing or anything like that. It's Thanks to you that Billy is here and he's able to give this information not only to you, but everyone else watching, anyone else you wanna share this with, that is why it's so important to give to A Rude Awakening International because you are making this type of show happen. So thank you for doing it and if you'd like to do it again, here's a couple of minutes to think about it. Thank you.
And thank you for your support of Shabbat Night Live. Maybe during the break, after you donated, maybe you went to the fridge and got some food to eat. And maybe after eating that food, typically you find that you have heartburn. And uh, Billy Weiss, we have some solutions for that. Uh, that first of all, you, you developed four uh, supplements because you couldn't find any on the market that were up to your standards. So you said, you know what? I'm gonna do it myself. Yeah, I mean, one of the toughest things is to find good quality supplements. When you look at the research, 80% of the supplements on the market don't contain any of the active ingredients. That means eight out of 10 don't have what they say they have in it. Wow. And even more importantly, um, the majority of them, a vast majority of them have toxins in them, mm. which I have a chapter in my book about that. So. Uh, cancer-causing chemicals, ADD, ADHD, I mean, all kinds of crazy things that we're finding in our supplements. Wow. And you combine that with the fact that many of these ingredients come from other countries that don't have standards for heavy metals and things, and then we find high levels of mercury, lead, arsenic, mm. uh, you know, tungsten. We find all these heavy metals in things that we believe are good for us. Now, the, so. the way to, uh, to combat that is we look for, specifically on yours, there's a, there's a symbol or a, um, there's a seal or something on here, isn't there? Something about a, a third party uh, testing. Yeah, so everything it'll tell you is manufactured in a GMP registered facility. There it that is, is yep. certified good manufacturing practices. Okay. And then we have NSF, the National Science Foundation, uh, come in. And so those two organizations come in and verify every single ingredient mm. in every single product that we have before it's put together and after. I can verify that as well because I, I found that, and I know what I'm looking for as well, and so mm -hmm. with LairdWellness.com, which is, which is my website, right. uh, the digestive enzymes, probiotic, multivitamin, and magnesium, the only ones I carry are yours right? for that very reason because I know that you've done the research and you've made them clean and that's why uh, I, I have them. Now, we wanna get into the first one here. We talked about uh, GERD, uh, mm -hmm. gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, or just heartburn, you know, anything right. like that. Right. Uh, now, digestive enzymes, can they replace the drugs that people are on to uh, combat these things? Well, Scott, as a pharmacist, I always tell everybody, I'm not a doctor, I'm not gonna tell you not to take your drugs, but what we find is that 99% of the time, within mm -hmm. two to three days, the people no longer need their Prilosec or their Omeprazole, their, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they're using for their heartburn. Uh, because what I think we've done and what I think we can demo if we uh, can it. here is that um, it's not too much stomach acid, it's actually a lack of enzymes that creates the problem. So I think we're kind of going at it backwards by cutting off the uh, stomach acid because God intended our bodies to, to make the stomach acid to activate the enzymes to break the food down. Yes. So that we can get the vitamins and the minerals from the foods that we're talking about eating, right? The God-given right. quality foods. So what I like to do with this demo is this. Think of our stomachs mm -hmm. as the pudding container. Okay, so we have pudding okay. here and a couple so of So if you'll open them. yours. All right. Okay. And so when we eat food, our bodies will take that food in the stomach, mm -hmm. which we have here. It will, we're gonna use our spoons and it will churn that food, okay? okay? And so that is designed to break the food down. Now in yours, I'm gonna let you churn with no okay. enzyme. Oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna churn with one of my OptiURX digestive enzyme capsules emptied into there, into the Now just pudding. to clarify, this is not God-given quality food. <laughs> this is not God-given quality food. This is for demonstration purposes only. Okay. Do not try this at home, as they say, right? Okay, so so I'm to gonna stir mine. Okay. I'm gonna have to be gentle here in the beginning. But I'm gonna stir mine, Scott, and you stir yours because this is the way the body would work. If we were eating high-quality, God-given quality foods, okay, anytime we cook those foods at 118 degrees or above, we destroy the enzymes in that food, okay? And so then, when we eat those foods, we're sitting around maybe watching the, the TV, we're watching the football game or whatever, um, after we ate, we'll feel a little bit of burn. And that is the body signaling, the brain signaling to the body, hey, we gotta break that food down. Mm. So it shoots out a little bit of stomach acid, right? Mm. And so, we feel a little burn and we go, oh, I'm not sure what's going on, but if there's no enzymes there for the body to activate 
That's what happens. Mm. It doesn't activate the enzyme, so the body will then later send a signal. Now maybe we're laying in bed, right? It's time to go to bed. And we get another signal to break that food down. Now we have the full-blown heartburn because we're laying down, right? right? And so what we like to do in medicine here in America is we say, well, let's just cut the acid off. When the acid is not the problem, it's actually a lack of enzymes, mm. right? And there's a lot of reasons for lack of enzymes. We, you know, our livers are overloaded with all the toxins. So the liver can help make enzymes, but it's, again, compartmentalized to keep us alive in the moment, trying to get rid of all the toxins. By the way, over a third of American adults have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So we know their liver's not functioning like right. it should. And that's the filter of the body. That's so. the filter of the body for the toxins that come in. Hmm. Then we have the pancreas, and we say, well, the pancreas can help make enzymes. Well, the pancreas is overloaded trying to keep the blood sugar under control, right? Again, do what is most important. That's the way God designed the body. We gotta keep the blood sugar down. So the pancreas is not gonna help. The gallbladder can help break foods down. Well, half of us don't have gallbladders anymore because we just have them removed, right? So we have all these things mm -hmm. going on and then we're eating poor quality foods or we're eating foods that have been cooked without active enzymes in them and we can't understand why we have heartburn. So we cut the acid pump off when all we really need to do, if you'll try to pour yours into your cup, this is not gonna I'm gonna happen. pour mine into my wow. cup. See, I'm gonna have to scoop it out and it's just a yep. lump still. It is not... Digested. So you can see yours is undigested, this is digested. So the wow. difference is when that. we digest the food, yeah, when we digest the food properly, the body makes the one request for the stomach acid. The stomach acid is produced, it activates the enzymes, and nobody has heartburn. Hmm. So 99 out of 100 people, we put them on the enzymes and the probiotics, and within two to three days, they'll go, never needed to Prilosec again and never had heartburn again. So that's a twofold thing. The acid is needed to activate the enzymes. Correct. Okay, Correct. so you need both. You need both. But without one, the body's just gonna push the other. It's just gonna keep pushing, that's correct. So if you don't have the enzymes and you cut off the acid, ah, then what? Now you start to get into our 398 side effects. Mm. And this is where people are really confused and misinformed. So the drug manufacturers of those drugs say you should never be on them for more than 12 weeks because they know there are serious <laughs> well, <does> ramifications. That? <laughs> that, right, who does that? To cutting off the acid. Huh. So when we cut off the acid, we increase bone loss. Ooh. When we cut off the acid, we increase heart disease. When we cut off the acid, we increase kidney disease. And on and on and on. For something that you can go to the corner uh, pantry and buy, right, the gas mm -hmm. station, and buy these drugs even without a prescription, without a doctor, without a pharmacist. And, and so we're doing these things and we never think of the consequences of what's going on. Wow. So all we need is to have the right enzymes in the system, the right probiotics in the system, and the body will take care of itself. Now your body will actually, if you're, your pancreas has already got pancreatitis or you know, you're not mm -hmm. even producing correct enzymes, if someone takes digestive enzymes, have you seen the body correct itself? You give the pancreas a little break, it becomes better adapted to creating Absolutely. enzymes and everything just kind of works a little better. Absolutely, just like the liver, Scott. Mm. We see all these people with these fatty liver issues and when we can get them on the OptiU program, we can get them on the right supplements that helps the body build new liver cells, the right water that helps the body build new liver cells. We watch and we go, mm. wow, they have no signs of that disease anymore. Huh. So now digestive enzymes are to the stomach as probiotics are to the lower intestine. Absolutely. Right? So what is, what is the pro, why would someone want to go on a probiotic? What's it gonna help overcome? Well, probiotics are really tied, our gut bacteria mm -hmm. is tied to every single organ in our body. So when we take the good bacteria in, um, we, first of all, 80% of our immune system is found there. Yes. We affect things like bone building. We affect things like uh, artery blockages in our heart. We affect going to the bathroom. I mean, it mm. literally affects every single organ in our body. And so it's not just about bloating in your tummy. Absolutely. It's a lot more no. complicated and important than that. It is, it is becoming more and more known, the gut is, the microbiome, the mm. probiotics are becoming known as the second brain of the body. Yes. The second brain of the body. And when people people wonder about how, well, when kids have ADHD, 
Yes. It's because their diet is poor, it's sending yes. the wrong signal. I mean, there's a separate nervous system, the enteric nervous system that goes straight yes. from the gut to the brain. And so what's the yeah. first thing that's gonna be affected yeah. in your body when you have bad diet? It's your thinking. Absolutely. There's a clear link between autism and gut bacteria issues. Mm. I mean, we, we know that scientific link is there. So probiotics are, there's a reason these are the foundational four and we're going mm -hmm. through them, but, but the gut, the gut, the gut, that's why two of the four foundations uh -huh. are about the gut because it is the second brain of our bodies. And even in iridology, the science of looking yes. at your eye as a map of what is going on in your body, uh, each little piece of the eye is like a map. If there's a black yep. spot in the color of your eye over here, it means that this part over here in your body is hurting, et cetera. Yep, yep. But the gut, goes all the way around the iris. So basically, in a nutshell, that means that the gut affects everything in the body. Well, it does, Scott, and what, what people miss, and again, this is a modern medicine failure, in my opinion, is that all autoimmune diseases start in the gut. Hmm. So when we can fix the gut, guess what? We see people's MS get better, we see people's Crohn's get better, we see people's colitis, IBS, their, their eczema, their psoriasis. We see their kids' ADH, ADD, ADHD get better. I mean, on and on and on. So mm. the gut is critical to long-term health. Now, what we miss in our diet, so we clean up our diet, mm -hmm. we have good probiotics, we have good digestive enzymes. Why would somebody need a multivitamin at that point, and what's a good one to look for? Yeah, so again, I created and formulated the OptiU multivitamin to, to cover the most common nutrient deficiencies in America today, mm. uh, and to help our body detox on a daily basis. So some people may say, well, if I'm eating good foods, why do I need, you know, why would I need a multi? And that's a really valid question, but the problem is, the food supply today is not like the food supply of 20, 30, 40, even 50, 60, 70 years ago. Right. Uh, things are grown earlier and earlier and sent to us. They're put on the shelf longer and longer. They're created with genetically modified ingredients. I mean, the studies are clear that we cannot get enough nutrients from food. Well, you think about that. If you take uh, avocados, for example, which are typically green when you see them at the store. Right. So you pick them, you think about any fruit, you pick it green off of the tree or mm -hmm. the bush or whatever, you have cut off the life supply. You have cut the umbilical cord yep. of that fruit. So it can no longer take in any more nutrients. Right. You've cut off that supply and now, even though it may ripen on the shelf, right. that's just the enzymes taking over ripening it. Well, that's correct, and so it's losing nutrients every day. As a matter of fact, mm. there's some research that says that a green bean loses 50% of the vitamins and minerals the day after it's picked. Wow. So one day. And you can imagine how long has the average vegetable or, or <laughs> yeah. fruit or things that we're eating today, how long have they been mm. picked? And here, here's the irony that some people don't understand, that the fresh vegetables, people think, oh, fresh is way better than frozen. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily so, because they have to think about this. You have to wait until those are absolutely ripe before, if, if you're going to freeze them, you right. have to pick them, freeze them that day, because they're ripe that day. And now they're in suspended animation, and they may actually have more nutrients than your yeah, fresh Yeah, I, I think the best way <laughs> in what we teach people is to try to find local farmers. Yes. Where they can deal directly with the farmer, know whether that seed, that crop was sprayed, yes. know what that, that animal ate, what it didn't eat, did it get steroids, did it get hormones? So I think anytime we can deal with local people, uh, you know, that, that's what we try to do. We try to find local people, local farmers, and then we know exactly what we're getting. That's perfect. Now we've only got about five more minutes. We got okay. three, three, wow, we're going <laughs> through these quick. We have three pillars left. One is okay. alkalizing water, and I think, uh, if we could just get this in a nutshell, but first of all, I wanna tell people to go to The Health Awakening, a recent show we just did with yep. Billy. We did a whole show at Billy's house on uh, alkaline water, why it's better, what it does, yep. how it helps your body. But in a nutshell, uh, what's so good about alkaline water? Well, I think, Scott, we need to be careful. I think we shouldn't say alkaline water alone, okay? Uh, there's a lot of different waters that are on the market that are alkaline, and, and they claim to be alkaline, and when I test them, they are alkaline. It doesn't mean they're an antioxidant water, okay? So what we wanna look for is an antioxidant alkaline 
water. Mm. So uh, I think, yeah, we can refer them to your show since we're running short on time, but they need to understand just because a bottle of water says it's alkaline does not necessarily mean that it is the best choice for our bodies, okay? okay. Very good, so yeah. it's almost like having the probiotics, but not the digestive enzymes. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and I should point out, Scott, that, that in the research, um, 90, over 99% of probiotics were completely worthless. They were dead bacteria. Uh, and so, you know, I'll have these people say, well, mine stays in the refrigerator. That makes it better, right? No, it makes it more expensive. But if it can not survive at 70 degrees in your house, how can it survive at 98.6 in our body? So, right. so much, again, confusion is why we've tried to take our program and make it super simple, lay everything out for people. Right, and that's like what they call uh, enteric coated? Or the, well, uh, it has a polysaccharide coating. Polysaccharide it's actually coating. not an enteric coating, okay. but very similar concept. Ba and what it does is basically, so people understand, when you swallow it, most probiotics die in the stomach because the stomach acid kills Correct. them off. But probiotics do their best work in the lower intestine. Correct. So that probiotic has to make it all the way through your yep. system and then release yep. down at that point. And that's why it's coated to protect it from all those elements in your digestive tract until it gets to that point. Yep. And okay. so the polysaccharide coating helps you do that, helps our bodies to, to release it at the right time, mm. and it protects it from being destroyed from, from heat. Ah, uh, that too, right? So yeah, so it does both. Okay, now your next pillar is science-based exercise. Yes. There's all kinds of, is, is this some, I mean, <laughs> exercise is complicated. There's all kinds yep. of million videos out there yep. on YouTube about exercise, do yep. it this way, do it that way. How do you simplify it? I, I, I wanna make exercise super simple. I mean, I really do. I don't even I don't even call it exercise anymore. I tell people just move. We call it movement now. Okay, good. Because yeah. some people take exercise and they hate it, right? And other people are addicted to exercise, and either either can work. But here's the simple things that I think are most important. So here we have a pound of muscle, a pound of fat, excuse me, and a pound of muscle. Okay. So they, both of these weigh a pound, but I, I ask people all the time, which do you think looks better on your body? The <laughs> pound of fat that's just, you know, a big blob, or the pound of muscle that is lean, right? So when we can look at these, and these are made to be like they would be found in life, this muscle is red. Lots of blood flow, lots of oxygen, lots of life there. In this muscle, in this fat though, you'll see very little splotches of red, right? Very little blood flow. Mm -hmm. And this is actually an endocrine organ that can make other hormones that can lead to more, guess what? Fat. Wow. So what I wanna do with movement or exercise is this. You wanna make sure you're burning this first mm -hmm. and you're building this second. And probably the easiest thing that I can tell people to help do that is to walk. That simple. Is to go out and walk. If we have people that like to exercise, if we can add weight-bearing exercise, that's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. If we can do body weight things like push-ups or pull-ups or air squats or even barbell things are awesome, and I, I personally do them. But for the person who says, you know what, I don't like to do those kind of things, if we can get those people to walk, I tell people a very bare minimum of 10 minutes twice a day. Okay. And try to get up and move at least a minute every hour. Okay. Okay, and so for the people that that don't like to do these things, you need to know this. A 15 to 20 minute leisurely walk after a meal can reduce the insulin response by 50%. And oh. controlling insulin, we're not we're going to run out of time, but is the number one hormone we need to control. Wow. Now, after all that, someone's gonna feel tired at the end of the day. <laughs> we purposely left magnesium to the yes. end. Your magnesium, uh, real quickly on the back, people will say, I, my, my supplement has more than this, but there's yeah. a difference with yours, what is it? Yeah, I mean, so the five organic chelated magnesium product is my favorite product. If I were stranded on Gilligan's Island and I could only <laughs> have one supplement, it would be the magnesium. Why? And, and well, because 350 positive functions in the body, Scott. Wow. 80% of American adults are found to be uh, magnesium deficient. Okay. So it has a big bang for, for just being one supplement. Now, we have five salt forms in here, so that makes it different. Because these salt forms work through different pathways in our body to help produce energy, to help produce relaxation, you know, so they okay. do a lot of different things. But you're right. Uh, if you look on the back of our 
product, it'll say three capsules equals 100 milligrams of magnesium. And people go, oh, well, the doctor told me to take four, five, 600, 800, whatever. Mm -hmm. And most products will be 400 milligrams of what they'll say is magnesium, right? But our product and all our products, we only give you the elemental amount of magnesium. So what that means is three capsules actually equals 100 milligrams of magnesium. The other products will have fillers and additives and preservatives and ah. things, and they'll go, well, that capsule weighs 400 milligrams. Gotcha. Right? So you're not getting, what people need to understand is you are not getting 400 milligrams of magnesium. You're getting 400 milligrams of weight. Mm. So we measure and put on our label only the elemental amounts of the product that matters. I don't care how much filler I have in that product, yeah. right? I care how much of the active ingredient that can get into my cells to make energy and do the work. And I can verify that those work for sleep. We were talking about rest, and that's why yes. I brought it up for rest. Yes. That is amazing for rest. I take four of those at night, and I sleep yep. like a baby. And if I don't, if I forget, I wake up tired. I've been dreaming all night. Yeah, it, 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 Scott, good. it's amazing for, for headaches, for migraines, for uh, heart arrhythmias, for AFibs, mm. for diabetics. I mean, it for athletes. It is truly, truly an amazing product. Now, you think, uh, how, many, how many typically, I know you don't want to prescribe, but how many do people take in a day? Yeah, absolutely. Most people take between three and six a day. Okay. Some people will take, say, four at bedtime, mm -hmm. and then we'll have them take one in the morning and one at lunch. Oh, okay. Uh, there's some really good research to use in magnesium to go to sleep, and there's some really good research to produce energy during the day, taking it in the morning and at lunch. So there's not necessarily a right or wrong. Um, four, if, mm -hmm. if four at bedtime works for you, that's that's the right dose. Okay. Um, but yeah, three to six would be the most common dose on the magnesium for All most right. people. Billy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Scott. The Word on Wellness. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Uh, again, thank you for your support. Your support brings Billy here, and uh, this has been The Word on Wellness. And I hope you're enjoying this series. And until next week, we'll bid you Shabbat Shalom and Shavua Tov. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon. And I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.